history of coronations around the world today. The coronation of King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla will be unique in modern times. The United Kingdom is the only monarchy in Europe which still holds coronations. Secularism and revolutions from the Enlightenment through the 20th century did away with Europe's other crowning traditions. No one wanted a coronation when crowned heads were getting chopped off. But Britain is not the only modern monarchy which still puts a little pomp and pizzazz into celebrating the beginning of a new royal reign. Many surviving monarchies outside of Europe still hold traditional coronation and enthronement ceremonies. They are a way to keep history and culture alive, link the mystic chain of dynasty, secure the reign of a new monarch, and ensure that their subjects view them with the proper reverence. Today, we'll find out when and why 11 of Europe's 12 surviving monarchies stopped or never started doing coronations and what they do instead to commemorate the ascension of a new sovereign, and explore fascinating coronation and enthronement traditions going on in Africa, Asia, and Oceania. This episode is the second in a four-part series on coronations I will be releasing over the next few months. Episode 1 explores the evolution of coronations from ancient times to today. 3 will look specifically at the history of the English and British coronation, and 4 will be a step-by-step -step guide of what to expect at the coronation of Charles and Camilla. Don't want to wait? Patrons can see all 4 episodes today. A link is in the description. Europe in the Middle Ages, Europe was ruled almost entirely by monarchies, but revolutions and upheavals from the 1700s to the mid-20th century brought down the majority of Europe's ruling dynasties. Today, only 10 hereditary monarchies and two elected monarchies survive in Europe. After watching their neighbors lose their crowns and sometimes their heads, modern monarchs were well aware that they held their exalted positions not by divine right, but by the will of the people. Since ancient times, placing a gold crown atop a sovereign's head was symbolic of their mandate from heaven. But in more secular times, monarchs don't want to offend their people with such customs, nor do they want to outrage with the incredible cost of lavish coronation events. Only the monarchy of the United Kingdom is bold or perhaps traditional enough to continue to hold coronations. Belgium broke away from the Netherlands to become a separate kingdom in 1831. As this was already well into the Enlightenment, Leopold I didn't bother with the coronation. He ordered a crown, but only as a heraldic symbol, and he never wore it. Belgian monarchs take an oath before Parliament to abide by the Constitution. After King Boudouin took the oath in 1951, MP Julien Laurent cried out, Vive la République, only to be shouted down by others crying, Vive le Roy. Laurent was found dead a week later. There was a similar protest at the installation of Albert II in 1993, but that politician survived his insubordination. The last monarch to be sworn in was King Philippe in 2013. Denmark, Europe's oldest surviving monarchy, held coronations from 1170 to 1840. In 1665, the crown of Christian V was forged. It was used until the constitution did away with coronations in 1849. Today, the crown is only displayed on the top of a monarch's coffin during their funeral, though the last king, Frederick IX, chose to have his sailor's cap placed on his coffin instead. In 1972, the ascension of his daughter, Queen Margrethe II, was announced from the balcony of Christenborg Palace to a cheering crowd. The Netherlands has never had coronations. Instead, they hold a swearing-in and investiture ceremony at Nieuwe Kerk, attended by the two houses of the state's general. The monarch wears royal robes. The crown, orb, and scepter are placed on a cushion but not worn. 
Queens Wilhelmina, Juliana, and Beatrix wore tiaras to their investitures, but those were more for fashion and don't hold the symbolic significance of a crown. The last investiture was of King Willem Alexander in 2013. Norway's kings held coronations since 1163, first at Christ Church in Bergen and then Nidarus Cathedral in Trondheim. In 1397, Norway joined Sweden and Denmark in the Kalmar Union. The three nations shared one monarch, who was crowned consecutively in each of the three countries. The union dissolved in 1523, and Norway joined with Denmark. During this era, the monarch was only crowned in Copenhagen, and the Norwegian regalia disappeared. In 1814, Norway was taken over by Sweden. A new set of Norwegian regalia was made so the King of Sweden could be crowned in Norway as well. In 1905, Norway gained full independence and Danish Prince Hakon VII was elected the new king. He and his British wife, Queen Maud, were crowned in Nidaros Cathedral. In 1908, the part of the constitution requiring a coronation was repealed. Since then, Norwegian monarchs have only been required to take an oath in the Council of State and Parliament. In 1957, Olaf V instituted a religious ceremony of royal consecration. This blessing last took place in 1991 for King Harald V and Queen Sonja at Nidaros Cathedral. Spain in the early Middle Ages, monarchs of Castile were crowned and anointed in Toledo. They received the royal sword, scepter, crown of gold, and apple of gold. In Aragon, coronations were performed at Zaragoza. In 1469, Isabel I of Castile married Fernando II of Aragon. Their kingdoms were joined under their daughter and sole heir, Juana. Since her ascension, Spain has not had coronations. Instead, new monarchs were proclaimed before the church and then before the Cortes General. Spain's modern regalia consists of a commemorative crown or funerary crown, which was made to top the coffin of Queen Elizabeth Farnese in 1775. It is made of gold-plated silver and contains no gems and a scepter which was given to King Felipe II by the Holy Roman Emperor in the 1500s. The regalia is never worn, but is placed on display during the proclamation of a new monarch. In 1975, King Juan Carlos I was proclaimed. He attended an enthronement mass at the Church of San Geronimo el Real in Madrid. He and his wife, Queen Sofia, were escorted beneath a canopy to a set of thrones near the high altar. Following the service, the king and queen waved to the people from the palace balcony, reviewed the troops, and attended a formal banquet. In 2014, King Felipe VI did not have an enthronement mass, but he did wave to the crowds. Sweden's oldest pieces of surviving regalia include a sword from 1528 owned by King Gustav Vasa and the crown, orb, scepter, and key of Eric XIV from 1561. In 1650, Queen Christina ordered a throne made of silver for her elaborate coronation. Oscar II had the last coronation in 1873. Subsequent kings elected not to be crowned, though there is no law preventing it. In 1973, Carl XVI Gustav gave a speech and was enthroned on Christina's silver throne at the Royal Palace in Stockholm. The crown jewels were displayed on a cushion but were not used. The Vatican. The Pope is the elected monarch of the world's smallest nation. The first recorded papal coronation was of Nicholas I in 858. From 1305 to 1963, new pontiffs were crowned with the papal tiara at St. Peter's Basilica on the first Sunday after their election. During Mass, the cardinals approached him and kissed his hand. Then the archbishops and bishops approached him and kissed his feet. Newly elected popes were carried through St. Peter's Basilica on a throne under a white canopy. 
three times the procession was stopped, and a bundle of flax was burnt before the new pope as a reminder to set aside materialism and vanity. In 1962, Pope Paul VI placed the papal tiara on the high altar as a symbol of humility. Since then, all popes have declined to wear it, instead instituting a simpler ceremony of inauguration. A coronation is not necessary. A new pope assumes the throne of St. Peter from the moment he accepts his election. However, any future pope could decide to reinstate the coronation if they choose. Europe has four sub-royal monarchies, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and the principalities of Andorra, Liechtenstein, and Monaco. Since 1278, Andorra has been ruled by two elected co-princes, the Bishop of Urgell in Spain and the ruler of France, which in modern times is its president. The other three are hereditary monarchies. None of the four micronations owns regalia. Grand Dukes of Luxembourg are enthroned before Parliament. They and new princes of Liechtenstein and Monaco attend celebratory masses to commemorate their ascension. There is no special ceremony to mark the ascension of a new co-prince of Andorra. There are currently 29 national-level monarchies in the world. I cover them all in my Royalty 101 Current Monarchies of the World video. Africa Eswatini, a nation landlocked within South Africa, has been ruled by a monarchy since King Mgwani III in 1745. Kings are polygamous, and an heir is selected from among the many sons based on the virtues of their mother. She becomes queen mother and religious leader, while the king is a secular ruler. In 1982, King Sabusa II died at 83. The Council of State selected from his 60 sons, 14-year-old Prince Makosetiv, to be the next king. A regent was selected to rule while the prince finished his education at boarding school in England. He was supposed to wait until his 21st birthday to be crowned, but conflicts and coups within the royal family hastened his ascent. In 1986, the 18-year-old prince returned for his coronation. The sacred ceremonies installing him as monarch were done in private and are shrouded in mystery. After the rites, the new king made his first public appearance, clad in beads and animal skins, carrying a cowhide shield, and wearing red and white feathers in his hair. He took part in several ritual dances, and singers chanted his official titles, including the Bull, Guardian of Sacred Shields, the Inexplicable, and the Great Mountain. He took the regional name Muswati III and married the first of several wives on that day. Lesotho, another small nation landlocked by South Africa, was established in 1822 by King Moshushu I. The current king is Letsi III, who took the throne in 1996. He was crowned in Setsoto Sports Stadium. He made his grand entrance escorted by mounted police in red uniforms, carrying sabers and lances. The king wore a traditional coat of animal skins. Two chieftains placed a beaded headband containing a brown and white feather upon his head. Traditional dances and songs followed. Africa has several subnational and traditional monarchies which still hold coronations, including the Asante Kingdom in Ghana. They hold the golden stool as their most sacred object. It is said to have been called down from the heavens by the first king's high priest and to harbor the souls of all the Asante people, living, dead, and yet to be born. In the 1880s, the British demanded the golden stool. The Asante hid it and went to war to protect it from ending up in the British Museum. Today, it is rarely seen and brought out only for important occasions, such as the installment of a new king. The last installment was for Utumfu Nana Ositutu II in 1999. During the ceremony, the stool was carried in on a pillow, it must never touch the ground, and was placed on an elephant skin. 
the new king was lifted over the stool by his attendants, and his bottom was allowed to gently touch the stool three times. The Toro Kingdom in Uganda crowned their current ruler, Rakiti IV, in 1995. The three-year-old king was awakened at 2 a.m. and taken to the entrance of the palace. There, he and his entourage engaged in a mock battle. Next, the king entered the palace to the sounds of traditional war drums. Inside the regalia room, he was permitted to ring the royal bell and beat the sacred drum. He was anointed with the blood from a slaughtered bull and a white hen. As morning broke, women were admitted to the palace. The king was seated upon the lap of a virgin girl and fed a meal of millet dough. A coronation oath was administered, with the boy lying on his side in accordance with tradition. At 10 a.m., the king, wearing a jewel-studded crown, was led to St. John's Anglican Cathedral where he was crowned by an Anglican bishop and given a Bible by the Roman Catholic prelate. Back at the palace, he was presented with a centuries-old copper spear and leather shield. Next, the king led a procession of nobles to inspect the royal corral and greet his subjects from a traditional shed. Asia, Bhutan, the Himalayan nation has had five dragon kings since the Buddhist monarchy was established in 1907 under Ujin. The unique crown was designed based on his father's battle helmet. The raven crown is fashioned from satin and silk and is surmounted by an embroidered raven's head, Bhutan's guardian deity. In 2008, the 100th anniversary year of the first coronation, the fifth dragon king, Jigme Kizar Namjil, celebrated his own coronation. November 6th was selected by astrologers as the most auspicious date. The ceremony was held in the Chamber of the Golden Throne at the Thimphu Dozong Monastery. At exactly 8.31 a.m., former king Sinye placed the raven crown on his son's head. The city was packed with foreign dignitaries and people from all over the country who came to enjoy the elaborate pageantry mingled with sacred Buddhist rituals. Colorful banners and floral decorations adorned the streets. Brunei The Sultanate was established in 1363 by Muhammad Shah. New sultans are crowned one year after their ascension. The current sultan, Hasnal Bokaya, was crowned in 1968 by his father and predecessor, Omar Ali Safidin III. A golden crown is placed upon their head, and they are presented with the dragon dagger. The ceremony is followed by a 21-gun salute. Royals and nobles remove their swords and brandish them to show their loyalty to the sultan. Cambodia's monarchy dates to Queen Soma, who ruled in 68 CE. New monarchs are elected from among the eligible members of the royal family. Kings of Cambodia are crowned in a ceremony with Romanic and Buddhist elements, conducted inside the royal palace at Phnom Penh. The new monarch places two wreaths of jasmine atop a golden pillow, lights incense, and places them around the table before taking a seat on the red carpeted floor. Prayers are read, punctuated by the sounds of a conch shell horn. The ruler then enters the throne hall, where he lights a candle encased in gold gilded glass, which represents victory. Monks shower the king with jasmine buds. Finally, the new monarch bows three times to the high throne, but does not sit upon it. The next day, the king takes a ritual bath in pure water from the Kulin Mountains. He sits in a golden chair and is carried into the throne hall at the head of a large procession. Buddhist monks, one for every year of the king's life plus one, chant blessings. The king prays before statues of his ancestors. Then he takes a formal oath to observe the constitution and to rule in the country's best interests. He receives the royal regalia, including a calico cat, golden slippers, and a diamond-encrusted gold crown and sword. 
Norodom Sihamoni had his coronation in 2004. He kept it simple so as not to financially burden his people, and he declined to sit on the high throne or wear the crown. Japan, the world's oldest continuous hereditary monarchy, is said to date back to legendary emperor Jimu around 660 BCE. He was believed to be the grandson of the sun goddess Amaterasu. Immediately after the death or abdication of the previous emperor, the new emperor is presented with two of three sacred treasures said to have been given to Jimu by his heavenly grandmother. They are a replica sword. The original is kept at Atsuta Shrine and a necklace of stone beads. The third and most important is a mirror representing the sun goddess herself. This holy relic is not presented to the emperor because it must never leave Isi Grand Shrine. Imperial messengers and priests are sent to the shrine as well as to the tombs of the four previous emperors to inform their ghosts of the ascension. The Japanese dynasty does not have a crown. Instead, the new emperor is enthroned on the chrysanthemum throne. The original is kept at Kaito Palace, but a 1912 replica at the Tokyo Palace is used today. Both the emperor and empress, who is presented on a smaller throne, wear traditional court dress. The emperor is given the privy seal, state seal, and wooden scepter. He gives a speech calling upon his subjects to assist him in attaining his aspirations. The prime minister replies with a promise of devotion. Finally, all present give three cheers of bonsai, which is timed precisely so that people all over the nation will cheer together. After the ceremony, the emperor and empress parade through the capital in a limousine and enjoy a banquet. The current emperor of Japan is Nirohito, who was enthroned in 2019. Prince Charles was a guest at the celebration, and he is said to have taken inspiration from it on how to conduct an ancient royal rite in the modern era. Thailand's coronation rites are a blend of Hindu and Buddhist traditions dating to the 14th century. In 1782, King Rama I established the kingdom with Bangkok as its capital. He wrote the guidebook on Thai coronations. The anointing was considered the supreme event, but by 1851, when Rama IV came to the throne, European influence meant that the crowning became equally important. In 1910, Rama VI held an elaborate coronation, which included a state progress by land and water, parades and fairs for the people, and banquets for foreign dignitaries. The event cost nearly 5 million baht, double that of the coronation of King George V of the UK held in the same year. During the ritual, the new king takes a bath of purification. He dresses in a traditional Thai costume made of gold and sits on the octagonal throne. He is anointed with a conch shell with water taken from eight temples, representing eight cardinal directions with Bangkok in the center. Next, the great crown of victory is placed on his head. The crown was made for Rama I in 1782. It is crafted in gold and enameled with red and green. The king also anoints his consort as they bow before him. The king is presented with the royal regalia, the nine-tiered umbrella, a sacred symbol of the monarch's protection of his people, the sword of victory, the royal staff, royal slippers, weapons of sovereignty, and the royal utensils, everyday objects made from precious metals and jewels, which include a fan, fly whisk, water urn, libation vessel, betel nut set, and spittoon. After the ceremony, the king holds a private housewarming celebration at the Grand Palace. In 2019, Rama X was crowned king. Oceania, Tonga, since ancient times, kings of the Polynesian island were crowned under a tree. The traditional rites involved drinking of kava, and the new king was presented with dozens of roasted pigs and baskets of food. The coronation tree was torn down in a gale in the 1890s. King George Tupo II had pieces of the wood inlaid into the throne of Tonga. Western missionaries influenced him to have a European-style coronation. 
current king, Tupo VI, was crowned in 2015. He was anointed with oil by an Anglican archbishop, then sat upon the throne and a golden crown was placed upon his head and a scepter presented to him. But the ritual of drinking kava was still considered the true coronation. In next week's video, we'll take a closer look at the coronation history of England. From the crown stolen from Edward the Confessor's grave to Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon's lavish clothes and parade. From making copies of the throne and regalia for co-monarchs William and Mary to Victoria's bungled ceremony. And the outrage of putting Elizabeth II's coronation on television. So you'll have all the background for the coronation of Charles III and Camilla. Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Don't want to wait to see the next episode? Patrons get exclusive early access to almost all of my multi-part series on Patreon early. If you would like to become a patron and help me make more fascinating history videos, check out the link in the description. Thank you for watching.